Okay, so this is one of our carriage stores. We have over 750 carriages in stock, which I think currently is one of the biggest collections in the world. And they range from all different periods. The Devil's Horseman is a company my father founded back in the early 1970s, and now it's a family business. So myself, my brother and our father are the heads of the company. And we supply horses, carriages and tack for movies, for TV, for commercials, for photography. Anything you horse needs in the entertainment industry, we supply. And if we carry on walking down this way, there's some of the earlier vehicles. Our father started in nightclubs in Paris, randomly jousting horses. And then from there, he moved over to England in the mid 70s and created the Devil's Horseman, which started in the live show formats. And from there, uh, through evolution, we went into the film industry and now we're currently one of the biggest suppliers in the world. Everything's on site here. Yep, we have a, a metal workshop and a wood workshop. We also make all our own saddles, so we have a leather shop upstairs because we, we very much believe that if you want to do this, you under, need to understand the science of everything. How the carriage was built, how the saddle would have worked in Tudor times. So like for example, these carriages here, they were used for Game of Thrones. And then we have our uh, like gypsy caravans. So all of these usually work on Peaky Blinders. And everything has to be in different states as well. Like some people don't want something brand new. A lot of it might go into the aging process. So then art department will come in and knock it all down to whichever color or how old it's meant to be. Is it meant to come from a fire? What's happened to the story? We work very closely with the production designers and set decorators. We also have, I think it's just under like 2,000 saddles and bridles. We have a big armor collection, so that's what separates us from the rest of the companies around the world, is our collection. So we have three, no, sorry, four tack rooms. This has a lot of our Western saddle collection in it. These actually, um, that we use are old derelict police saddles from the police force, so we bought up a lot of the collection. And then here you can see, so we kind of, we call these in-house, like secret saddles. Um, so if we want to kind of see, pretend that someone's riding without uh, a big saddle on, we'll put a blanket over the top of it and we can make all the stirrups disappear so it looks like you're doing a bareback. But it's, as we realized as time goes on, it's not good to ride horses bareback all day, it gives them back issues and things, so we kind of, what well, we do now, we use these secret saddles underneath. Um, these saddles here are more trick saddles. They were created for Star Wars. So on the last Star Wars movie, we actually we, we had to create um, suits as well for the horses because they weren't meant to be horses. They're meant to be creatures from the Star Wars world. So um, that, was a, that was a fun few weeks, dressing them up. They're like big woolly bears. <laughs> We work in the major blockbuster movies, if it be Star Wars, Wonder Woman, also the biggest television series in the world. I did every single season of Game of Thrones. We do The Crown, we do Peaky Blinders. The biggest stars of Hollywood come to our hub, which is the Witchwood Stud, and we teach everybody. We teach, you know, um, I've taught Madonna to ride, I've taught Gal Gadot, we've taught um, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. Oh my God, the names go on. Who are we teaching at the moment? Uh, Olivia Colman, Saoirse Ronan. We've also worked with Annie Leibovitch with photography, with Rankin. I think at the start, when I first started, it was fun to kind of get involved, wear the costume and do all of that. Now I couldn't think of anything worse than putting a costume on. Now I find it so much more interesting behind the camera and how you are given this script and how you understand the narrative. So I'm just a freelance stunt rider um, slash groom, so I get called in as and when they need me for various different jobs. And um, yeah, it, I kind of do anything and everything from prepping horses to 
hanging upside down off them, whatever I get asked to do. No day is the same. One minute you're sort of standing around helping with carriages and having a really relaxed day. The next minute you're, you know, catching horses and people are falling off everywhere and having the time of your life. So yeah, I feel really lucky with that. And the other thing I really enjoy is, I suppose, is teaching. I really love it because you're getting to give your passion and your love and your skill to another person that's never experienced it. So it's a real give back. So with the trip riding work, everything starts in a circle first before we like, start straight line work. So this is very much for education of the horse and education of the rider. Nice. This is a trick saddle, so you can hang upside down, you can stand on top of it, you can jump on and off. It's got three girths, so the saddle doesn't slip. Chin up. Good boy. Oh, oh. oh come. There's a lovely moment to experience, and you're giving someone something for life. You know, once you learn to ride a horse, you can, it's like a bicycle. You can pick it up, you can come back to it, you can stick with it. So that's definitely one of my favourite points. Okay, good, when you're ready. So this is a shoulder stand. Nice, tight, tight legs. Good, and down. And this is the type of training we would have done, we, we did do for Wonder Woman, because there was lots of tricks and things involved. I went to the cinema last night and um, I watched the trailers and I came with eight actors that I taught to ride. Just watching the trailers. So we currently have 98 horses on site, which are all owned by our company. In here, if you can see him, <laughs> this is Doctor. Come say hi. So Doctor, one of his claim to fame is he's one of the Lloyds Bank horses. Currently, six of them lay claim to it. So when we do our adverts, we use on average five to six horses to, so we can split up their work throughout the day. This is Caniero. He's a little Andalusian. And we picked up horses from all over the place, all over the world. We get a lot of horses like Lithuania, Hungary, from Holland, from Spain, from Portugal, from the UK. And someone asked me the other day, like, you know, how do you find your horses? I don't know how it happens, but somehow our horses find us and we find them. So what we'll do is we'll slowly build up the younger horses with the older horses. The older horses are very secure in their beings, they've been there, they've done it, and they'll teach the younger horses, which is nice. So that's how we kind of, we introduce it slowly and gradually. I wouldn't just go and pick 100 horses tomorrow and throw them into a battlefield. Like Game of Thrones, like Battle of the Bastards, you've got 100 horses charging down the hill and everyone screaming and yelling. I know which horses kind of deal with different situations better. Some of them quite enjoy it, some of them enjoy a quieter sequence. Interestingly, that seems to be quite easy. Do you know, sometimes the hardest things to do is a horse tied static to a tree. That's <laughs> probably been some of my trickiest days. It's the small things that usually catch you out. There's many different layers, if it be the carriage workshop, if it be training of the horses, if it be building saddles, if it be trying to organise how we're going to get 100 horses next week to Spain. Yeah, there's always something different to do. I never want to kind of be one of those companies that just turns up and does the same old thing. Always, I, we always strive for perfection, to be a perfectionist and, and take it to another level. And coming up with new ideas and how we design things, a bit, I think that's moving forward what we really want.